Good afternoon or good evening, people watching in 65. Lisa Boyce here. Um, I'm going to give you the gospel. The gospel is in always is always in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That is the gospel. That Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. Now, someone pointed out to me earlier that I have not been given, I have not been given out the ABCs of salvation. First of all, A, you admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. There's only one Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. Believe on the finished work of Christ and call out to him. But remember that the gospel, what you're believing, what you're believing is that he died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you believe that he took care of our sins, our past, present, and future sins at the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for our past, present, and future sins at the cross of Calvary. You call out to him and talk to him. That's called prayer. You admit that you are in need of a Savior, that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Those who believe that is, you, you truly believe in the gospel and what he did for you at the cross, then you will never, ever lose your salvation. Now, there is, like I said before, head knowledge and heart knowledge. And it's in Romans, it's in Romans 10... Let me look it up for you. Let's look up that verse, shall we? There it is right there, Romans 10. And it says here, well, let me start at verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there you go, right there. You truly believe you are sealed until the day of redemption. You will never lose your salvation under no circumstances. And that's the truth. That is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. You will never lose your salvation. That is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you believe that, you're saved and sealed until the day of redemption and never losing your salvation. Once saved, always saved. I know that's a controversial issue. I don't know why, because it's biblical, but people like to argue. So, you know, if they get too hot and heated with me, I block them. But otherwise, I usually don't. I just let them make their opinion and so forth. I want to give you this article out of End Times Headlines. It's about a 16-year-old boy that got arrested for not wearing a mask in school. We've come to the... Oh, and by the way, the vice presidential election or uh, debate is tonight. Biden, not Biden, um, Pence versus Kamala. Pence versus Kamala, and I pray to God that he... <laughs> I, I really hope he hands it back to her. She's going to be in a plexiglass. He's not. Now, me and my husband was just talking before I made this video. If Pence comes out of this thing tonight, positive for COVID, something is definitely wrong. That's the bottom line. Something is definitely wrong, and it is sabotage. For real. I believe it is anyway, but if he comes out with this, then something is wrong. 
But anyway, this story, a 16-year-old boy was arrested last month for refusing to wear a mask at a central Florida high school, and his lawyer is calling the incident government abuse, which is what it is, after the teen was suffering from panic attacks. This mask has been, people have made these masks into idols. I still get looked at when I walk around. I went, I took my son to the doctor and they said, oh, do you want a mask? I said, no, I don't. And she walked away. People are making masks into idols. And is pathetic. It really is. But anyway, according to, and another thing. Let me explain something to you all. This mass mandate is not a law. It was never voted into Congress as being a law. So you don't have to wear a mask. According to the report from Fox 5, the Winter Springs High School sophomore, whose name was redacted on September 17th report, was reportedly arrested after he refused to wear a mask and abide by other school rules which violated pro, uh, probation order that required him to maintain good behavior in school, the Orlando Sentinel reported. Now, good behavior? I understand he was on probation. But a mask is not part of a behavior uh, plan. I'm sorry. That's wrong. The school, the report from the uh, Seminole County Sheriff's Office states that the teen had been given instructions to obey the school rules as a condition to his probation. It did not say what he was on probation for. In the report, it stated at the beginning of September 1st, the teen refused to obey the rules, including wearing a mask and social distancing, and that he received a warning and was also caught vaping in the cafeteria. You know what it sounds like? They're using the mask as an ex excuse to arrest him. That's what it sounds like. Like I said, they're making this mask thing into a idol. That's what they're doing. And I refuse to bow down to it. You got to speak up, people. Just because you're saved, you can't just say, oh, well, you know. God to take care of it. Well, God gave you sense, and God gave you a mind, and God gave you discernment. Use it. And he gave you a mouth. You got to use it. You just can't sit back and say, oh, you know, you can't have a passive attitude all the time. It don't work that way. If they're going against that word, the word of God, mass does not help anybody. And people want to say, well, we're supposed to obey the government. Yeah, no, to a point. <laughs> the government is corrupt as hell. To a point, we obey them. And that mass mandate thing is not part of it. I'm sorry to break your heart, but no. No. <laughs> that is not part of it. I'm going to link this article in the description box. Another thing. People sometimes have a problem with the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. If you read the old, uh, the uh, part of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Christ gave them a mandate. If you don't have a sword, go out and buy one. Where is that at? Let me find it. Let will put the, uh, I don't believe in gun people, to rest. <laughs> Let's find it. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Luke 22, 36 through 38. Jesus is also fulfilling prophecy, making a surprising statement, it says here. That two swords are enough, he said to them, by now, if you... Have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if it don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. In other words, arm up. <laughs> the most 
law-abiding citizens are those who believe in the Second Amendment. I'm just saying. Some people don't like guns, and that's fine. I grew up with them, so it's fine. But I tell you what, before someone breaks in here and threatens me, my children, even my cats, they won't be able to walk out. I'm just saying. So I will link this article in the description box, and I will be back on if there is anything else that the Lord wants me to tell you. But in the meantime, have a good evening.